Okay, hello everyone. I'm Imran. Um, I'm the product manager for uh, browsers in Hyperworks. Um, today we'll be looking at what's new in Hyperworks 2024 uh, for browsers. So let's uh, dive into it. So uh, the major uh, enhancement that we have done in this particular release uh, from the browser point of view is the common entity editor, um, which is going to be kind of a common entity editor for uh, all the browsers. It's going to uh, display the data from uh, or any selections in uh, any of the browsers. So before looking into the working of it, I just wanted to um, show, I mean, give the reasons why it was done, why it was needed. So some of the pain points with the integrated EEs that we have in the current uh, versions with the uh, E attached to each and every browser. So while working with uh, with this setup, if a user has uh, resized uh, the entity editor in a browser to see data, and then they switch to next browser, they would have to again end up resizing it. So that's that's one of the major uh, pinpoint that uh, you have to keep on resizing to see the data. Second, uh, the bottom dock area was almost unusable uh, because the entity editor was again attached to the browser and it used to kind of take over the entire space. Then, of course, the third one and the major one is you cannot undock the entity editor to either float onto the graphics or dock it uh, on the right side or keep it on the float and keep, uh, keep it in the secondary screen. So, so that is what is kind of addressed here with uh, a common dockable window. So entity editor is now undockable. It can float on the graphic screen or it can be docked uh, on the right uh, side of uh, your uh, product window. There's a video here, but uh, I'll directly go into the demo here. Okay, so on Invoke uh, 2024 version, this is how it's going to look. It'll have an entity editor uh, by default on and docked on the left bottom dock area, just like in other clients. And uh, now once we desize it, it's obviously going to react to the selections made in any of the browser. Uh, the data is uh, going to be shown here, similar to the previous versions. Now, when you switch to the other browsers, the once you resize it, the same size is remembered, and uh, the selection in the active browser will be populated. So upon switching, the entity editor is going to react to each and every browser. And if there is a selection in that particular uh, browser, it's going to be populated. OK, and uh, of course, user can, uh, since it's a undockable window, you can close from here and uh, the entry point is given here inside the view pull down. can turn it out from here or simultaneously again with the uh, shortcut as well, which is uh, shift D. And uh, similarly, you can double click on an entity in the browsers or in the graphics as well to bring uh, the entity editor back. So that's another way. So yes, of course, you can undock it now and uh, have it floating in the graphics. So even if it is undocked, it's going to behave exactly the same way uh, like it was uh, when it was docked uh, left bottom. So again, you can dock it here on the right side. And uh, this particular position, whether it's floating or docked on the right side or whether it's in the second screen, all this is going to be remembered across sessions. So once you set it up uh, from the next session, it's going to come up exactly in the, in the same uh, area. OK, so it's going to behave similarly to all the browsers. So even uh, browsers like, uh, for example, references, uh, it's again, uh, the common E is going to be uh, showing you the data from for it. So almost all the browsers now have uh, don't have an E attached to it. The common E is going to react to the selections made in those browsers. OK, so that was one part of it. Uh, second is, of course, uh, the uh, li live link between the entity editor and uh, the graphic selection itself. So now you can click on any entity in the graphics and even without going into its respective browsers you have the entity editor up and uh, it's live listening to the, all the selections so you pick anything in the graphic you will have the data displayed in the entity editor and uh, it's for any any type of entity that you can pick from the graphics for example i can pick materials or i can pick uh, a part or a subsystem all those kind of entities can be picked and uh, you have the data live available here for review and editing. 
And uh, not only just for the named entities, even um, the unnamed entities, for example, elements and nodes, you can pick those and uh, you can edit them right away, like how you would edit the uh, in a regular entity editor browser. So this kind of allows for quick uh, review and editing of a single entity that was kind of missing before. So now you don't need to actually go into each respective browser if you're uh, if you were looking to just edit one entity or review one entity you can directly do it from the just picking it in the graphics and in the entity editor of course if you want to do multiple uh, multi edit or multi review then you can go into the entity views and use uh, attribute columns there and uh, not just the single entity selection here uh, uh, we kind of E gets populated for uh, multi-entity select as well. Let me isolate the cards here. So if we pick multiple entity selection, the again entity is going to show you the data of all that uh, ent those entities selected. Here uh, in the idle selector, uh, just for the sake of uh, uh, performance, we have put in one limit here, which is of 10K. Excuse me. So the idea is, uh, that if you're picking any uh, entities above uh, such a big uh, number, your uh, your goal is to mostly uh, not review and edit. Uh, it's mostly about to, to do something else like organization or uh, saving the selection and utilizing in somewhere else. So the focus is not on reviewing and editing. So if you pick entities above 10K or below 10K, it's going to show the data if entities are picked above 10k uh, it's not going to show uh, e is not going to react to it uh, it's not only for uh, the unnamed entities like elements and nodes it's for all the entities and if for some reason for some use case if users want to uh, to select more entities in the idle itself more than 10k and still have the data here then we have added this preference option that with which you can change uh, that number and then have your selections And uh, one more thing is with the uh, common EE, we have added a caption as well here that's kind of uh, an indicator of which entity data you're looking at. Of course, idle selector is there, but if you have kept your common EE into a secondary screen, it's going to uh, right away tell you what, which entity data you're looking at. So whatever entity is picked in the graphics, you will have uh, an indicator shown there. Okay. And along with the um, idle selector, the entity editor syncs with the selections uh, that are being made inside uh, an advanced selector as well. For example, if you're picking any uh, nodes or elements and uh, you want to pick by a collector or by any of this uh, listed entities, the entity editor is going to show uh, the full data of that particular entity. So you can review that data and pick based on, on that information as well. So this live sync is of course available only in the idle selector. If we go into any of uh, the context, for example, missing context, uh, the guide bars, this link is not there. Um, we have specifically turned it off here because yeah, here um, the focus is again, not uh, picking in and editing or reviewing entities. It's more about uh, picking and uh, doing other operations like meshing, for example, in this case, or organizing. So the live sync with the graphics and the E is going to be there only in the idle selector. But of course, even in these guide bars, if you're uh, using idle, if you're using the advanced selector to make your final selection, then again, entity editor is going to react to the selections made inside the advanced selector. Okay, with uh, with the common EE being available, uh, and any entity that you pick, for example, is already user is already inside the uh, review and editable mode as well. So this is not just read only; you can edit uh, the values from here directly. So since you are already inside the editable mode, the edit context menu that we used to have in the previous version, that's not there anymore, that's removed. Uh, it does show up, but only when you have the entity editor off. So this option is gonna bring up the entity editor. There's another way of bringing up uh, the entity editor. But once it's up, uh, you will not see that uh, edit context menu because you're already into uh, the edit mode. 
Okay. Then another change here is uh, the double click. In the previous version, you would double click on an entity to have a floating window and there you could edit. Now again, the same reason, just with one select or one click, you're already into the edit mode. So for double click, we are now gonna bring up uh, the browsers. So you set an entity into idle selector and double click on an entity uh, in the graphics. It's gonna bring up the browser and uh, select that entity in the idle selector and show the data into, into the entity editor. Okay, and then for uh, a case where we have a double click going into, into context tools, for example, connectors here, if I double click here, then along with bringing up the browser, it's going to take user to the uh, context as well to uh, do the editing, just like in the previous version. And uh, the context menu, again, uh, is going to remain. Uh, this is for entering into the uh, context. And uh, if you don't have the entity editor, then it's going to show up uh, both those options. Okay, again, for the double click, uh, bringing up uh, browsers. Um, yes, uh, it is a quick way to bring up the, uh, the respective browser, but for some reason, if any user finds it too hot to handle, they can change that or turn it off from the preferences. Uh, we have the preference uh, option. So if you turn that off, then double click will basically not do anything because the E is already up. But again, if the entity editor was off, then double click is going to bring up the entity editor. OK, then another quick option that we have added here is uh, the show in browser. Let me turn these guys off. So if you select any entity, again, a context menu shows up here. Uh, you can just like double click, uh, a context menu can also be used to invoke the respective uh, browser and the same entity is highlighted in the browser and uh, the EE is going to show the data. This is the behavior for all the named entities. This is supported even for uh, unnamed entities like uh, elements. So you can use this option. So here uh, the difference is of course, these uh, entities are uh, controlled by a threshold limit of 1000. So if these entities are lesser than that, then, then you will see the same behavior that uh, all the entities will be listed and uh, the selected entity will be highlighted in the browser. But if they are more than the count, we instead uh, invoke the browser and send the selection to the selector. From there, you can populate it inside the uh, browser. And uh, here uh, it works for multi selection as well. So if you had uh, done a multi selection, then you use show in browser, same selection is sent to the selector. From there, you can populate it. Then uh, while doing this, we have added one more option, which is inside the, the entity state browser. Um, so here, uh, in the previous versions, if you're working with the uh, entity state browser, uh, all you could do is just turn these two options on or off. You were not able to edit it from here. And now because of the common EE, uh, you can edit these attributes from the uh, entity state browser as well. For anything that's active, E is going to just work as usual, going to show all the data. But anything that's inactive, we're going to gray out uh, the uh, editing, uh, indicating that it's uh, an inactive entity. Then within the entity editor itself, we have made a small change that in the in the previous uh, versions, this edit context menu used to bring up uh, a floating EE. Now this is routed to kind of expand the uh, embedded EE itself so that uh, the editing can be done uh, in the same uh, window itself. So uh, this option is now going to expand the embedded EE instead of bringing up the floating EE. Okay, then uh, last thing is for like i said for most of the browsers the e this common e itself is going to give uh, you the data uh, but there are some dialogues uh, which had their own entity editors they are going to continue working uh, uh, the same way so there is no change there so any dialogue that contains an integrated uh, entity editor inside it uh, that's going to have uh, the entity editor uh, attached to it again the same reason that this common e user can place it anywhere if it is in the secondary screen you have to pick here and then uh, do the editing over there so that's that's one of the reasons that uh, any ee inside uh, any of these dialogues are is uh, left as is. Uh, and uh, I hand it over to Sophia now to uh, show a couple of more uh, 
enhancements that we have done in 24. Okay, so along with the common EE, we also had a few other enhancements that went into 2024. Uh, so starting up in that line is the element config reorganization that uh, is now available in the model browser. This is uh, specifically targeted to the 0D and the and the 1D categories uh, where the configs are now going to match uh, the ribbons. So let me quickly jump into the product and let us uh, see how it looks. Uh, so here we have this is uh, to give a quick recap. Uh, the element categorization feature went into 2023.1, the previous release, where the elements folder was basically classified or subdivided uh, depending on the dimensions and the configs. So uh, this pretty much now allows the users to get a quick glimpse of uh, or the quick glimpse about the uh, elements that is present in their model, like to get a count on how many uh, 2D elements or 3D elements are present or uh, what particular, uh, how many elements are present in a particular config. Uh, also, they can now uh, quickly perform any of these operations uh, that the context menu posts on uh, both the dimension level and the config level. So with that being said, uh, there was kind of a discrepancy uh, when it came to the configs that were listed under the 0Ds and the 1Ds. So as you can see in the 1D ribbon, we have all these configs present. And for example, to take, let's say, uh, in the model browser under mask config, we have got so many keywords listed, but if I go here into the ribbon, it would only give me a specified list of keywords. So there was this kind of mismatch uh, that was present. So that is now addressed and uh, with 2024, uh, you can clearly see that this uh, mismatch is addressed and now they are uh, exactly matching to how uh, it is present in the ribbon. So you take the mask example here and it's going to exactly give me the list of uh, keywords uh, that are present in the ribbons. So this uh, reorganization uh, has been uh, done to all the interfaces and uh, the users uh, will now no longer have confusion with the same. So that's about that feature. Now quickly moving on to the next one is a little upgrade that was done to this uh, empty tool in the validate ribbon. So now we'll have uh, any empty include or part, if at all is available in the model, listed uh, in this delete empty dialog. So uh, previously, if a user had to do the same, they would have to or be present inside the view of that particular entity, say parts or includes, and then access the same via the context menu. I'm sorry. So if at all it's present, they'll have to access the same via the context menu, and then it, it would list the empty include or the part if at all is present in the model. So now they can do the same with just a click, go here, and then find if they have a empty include or a part and quickly do the cleanup. 